2023 is almost over, so now let's take a look at how my EDC has changed over the year. In this video, I wanted to showcase my updated everyday carry. I want to showcase the new additions or changed items, as well as highlight items that have stayed the same over the year. We'll start off with my core EDC. The core EDC consists of the same three items pretty much everyone will have, regardless if they're into EDC or just carry the bare minimum, and those items are keys, wallet, and phone. Starting off with my key setup, it has stayed relatively the same with one small new addition, and that is this Glow Rhino Tritium Vial. It's a small little keychain, it's clear, and has a thing of tritium in it. Tritium is basically a material that has a consistent radiating glow. You can't really see it glow in the day, but of course it comes really handy at night, so if I were to accidentally drop my keys, I could see it in the dark. I don't know if the camera really picks it up well, but I'm kind of hiding the vial in my hand and as you can see it has a little glow. And then the rest of my key setup other than the actual keys on it. First up the key ring has stayed the same. It's the Exotac free key system. I've utilized this key ring for years now and I love it. So basically it's an improvement over the traditional key rings so instead of having to dig your fingernails into the key ring and pull it off and then slide off the thing it has a strategically placed bump right here where you simply press down on it and then the key ring pops open and you can slide in and out whatever key or accessory you want with ease without having to dig your fingernails into the key ring. And then the next accessory on my key ring is the Tech Accessory Suspension Clip. It's basically a pocket clip for your keychain. Obviously it slides onto the keychain and you can clip your keys to the side of your pocket, which is really nice. And then lastly on my keychain is my tile. This is essentially just a tracker, so if I were to lose my keys I can look it up on my phone. And I can also do the reverse if I press down on the tile, my phone phone will ring, so if I ever lose my phone but still have my keys, I can find my phone. It's a really nifty device, I've never lost my keys or my phone, but it's great to have that peace of mind. And next up is another mainstay, that is my wallet. It's the same wallet I've carried for a few years now, it's the Miscellaneous Goods Co. x Pete's Pirate Life collaboration. It's essentially just their slim wallet, but with the added addition of this back pocket. It's an American made wallet made out of quality leather, and as you can see it has a great patina and you get small little hidden details around it since it is a Pete's Pirate Life collaboration. It stays really slim and the inside pocket allows me to carry a wide amount of cash, cards, as well as certifications that I need to have on my person at all time. And the outer pocket has my driver's license and most used credit cards. And then the last item in my EDC core is of course my cell phone. It stayed the same since the beginning of the year and that is the Sony Xperia 1.3. It's a big phone and consists of a lot of enthusiast features. You get both front-facing speakers, you get a headphone jack, got a SIM card tray that doesn't require a tool, yet a really high-quality camera with a lot of features, and it sits inside a Spigen case. Not too sure how to pronounce it, but it's a very popular Amazon brand that makes cases for a wide variety of smartphones. And what I like about the case is that it has a good grip, it protects the phone well, and doesn't add too much bulk to the already big footprint of the phone. And next up are two electronic devices that are also mainstays of my EDC. First up are my earbuds. These are some Sony wireless earbuds. I'll flash up the name of them. Uh, again, these haven't changed since the beginning of the year. They're really good. They have great battery life. They sound really good. And they fit in a nice compact case. And next up is another mainstay, and that is my Garmin Instinct smartwatch. I've worn this for years now. It's great as an EDC watch as well as a watch to wear on duty as an EMT. It's rugged, it consists of several good smart features. I really love the UI, I like the timers, I like the fitness and sleep tracking, and it's held up over the years. The battery life is excellent, and I definitely recommend this watch. It's been a mainstay of my EDC for years now. However, this year I decided to dip my toes into enthusiast watches. While the Garmin Instinct has by far been the most worn watch of the year, and of course it's the only watch I wear on duty, my next most worn watch of the year is my Citizen Garrison Titanium Field Watch. It features Citizen's signature EcoDrive movement, it's solar powered, and has a Japanese movement. What I like about the watch is that it's simple, but you can still dress it up or dress it down in a casual environment. You got a nice uh, brown leather band, and what I really like about the watch is that the body is made out of titanium, as well as this little buckle and the watch strap. It's very lightweight, and I really like the contrast 
contrast of the silver, the brown, and the green in the dial. It has glow-in-the-dark numbers and watch hands as well. I'm not really a big watch expert. Again, I've only slightly dipped my toes into the enthusiast watch game. I definitely don't want to spend too much money on watches because we all know those can get really expensive. But this watch, uh, I think, only sent me back around like $150, and you're getting it from a quality brand with a great movement, and it's made out of solid materials, and I really like the design of it. I really like the field watch aesthetic, and I feel like this combination of materials and colors was perfect for me and was well within my price range. Right Slice Light. Pen, multi-tool, and knife, and flashlight. Those are the three core items of anyone's expanded EDC, and I've definitely changed my items over the course of 2023. Starting off with the pens, these two pens are by no means new. I've had these in my collection for a while, but I swapped from the Fisher Space Pen Astronaut to the Big Idea Design Mini Click Pen and the Fisher Space Pen Bullet because these are a lot more compact in size, and I can essentially just throw them into my pocket, like to literally just let it sit at the bottom of my pocket and forget about them, but if I do need them, they're there. Whereas the Fisher Space Pen Astronaut, it's an amazing pen, and I still carry it regularly on the job, but then again, I am in uniform, and I have the space for it, whereas these pocket size pens are perfect for casual EDC. First up, the Big Idea Design Mini Click Pen. It's made out of titanium. It's great quality. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You got a nice clip, and then of course, you got a regular clicker mechanism. And then the classic Fisher Space Pen Bullet. Uh, I, of course, have a pocket clip on mine, and the Space Pen Bullet is actually a cap, and what I really like about it is that while closed, it's in this very small and compact form factor, but when you open it up and put the cap on the tail, it expands to a bigger size, and it feels like a full-size pen, but you carry it in a much more compact form factor. And it's made in USA, which is awesome. And next up for my multi-tool, I made a huge upgrade from the Leatherman Free P2 to the Leatherman Garage 40th Anniversary Multi-Tool. It utilizes the free platform and adds on a lot of upgrades, including a MagnaCut blade that has a thumb stud for a lot quicker opening. It retains some of the same features I love, like the spring action scissors, the deep carry pocket clip, and of course the one-hand operable free series platform. The biggest upgrades to the 40th anniversary tool and the ARC are the additions of the Leatherman proprietary bit drivers. A lot of people, including myself, really wanted the proprietary bit drivers in the free series, and after half a decade of research and development, they were finally able to successfully implement them onto the free series, which is awesome. With the addition of the bit drivers on my multi-tool, I now have an expanded tool set with the addition of the bit kit set that I carry in my EDC. DC backpack. I'm able to swap out the regular Phillips and flathead screwdrivers with Torx bits, and I'm able to do knife maintenance if I need to. And another feature that I love about the 40th anniversary tool is the spring action pliers as well as the adjustable plier pivot. Overall, this is an amazing multi-tool. It's a huge upgrade over the free P2, and this will definitely be a mainstay of my EDC for years to come. It's no secret that I love knives, and I have a lot of knives. I have really way more knives than any one person would need, but in terms of the knives that I've consistently carried this year, it's definitely these three knives. These are three new knives I bought this year, and by far my favorite has got to be the MSI, or Microtech Standard Issue. I love this knife. This is probably my favorite new knife of 2023. It's essentially Microtech's take on the crossbar lock now that the access lock patent expired from Benchmade. Microtech calls their crossbar lock the ram lock, and it's really nice and easy to use. It's a finger safe lock. You can swing the blade closed. You can also swing the blade open. It's also a larger knife, and it has a nice deep carry pocket clip. It utilizes Torx bits instead of Microtech's proprietary bits, which I really like. It allows you to repair your knife or even make some modifications. The blade shape is nice. It's kind of in this uh, modified sheep's foot uh, blade shape, and I think that's great for everyday carry. I also think it's a pretty great value. While it's not cheap by any means, it's still a Microtech, it's still made in the USA, and still a premium knife. It is only $250. I'd say it's competitively priced, especially against Benchmade and other American-made knives. Overall, it's a solid knife, 
and is one of my most carried knives of the year, and will probably be my favorite new knife of the year. And then the next most carried knife of 2023 is definitely my 940-1. I mean, it's a classic, it's the 940, but upgraded in materials. You get S90V for even more edge retention. You get that classic reverse Tonto 940 shape. And then you get some ultra lightweight carbon fiber handles that feel great in the hand. And while I've carried a bunch of various knives in my collection and I've bought a lot of different knives, by far the next most carried knife is actually a knife I recently got at Blade Show West and that is the Blade Show West exclusive Protec Mordax. I got number 40 out of 100. You get a S45 VM blade, honeycomb uh, textured aluminum handles with a mother of pearl button inlay. This was actually Protec's first button lock knife before the Malibu. It's a little bit bigger than the Malibu, but of course you get that amazing action. You get a nice finger choil at the top near the blade, and then of course the button lock is awesome. It's finger safe, it's very fidgety, and it's a quality Protec knife that you'd expect. And next up, in terms of my EDC flashlight, we have the Surefire Sidekick. I've carried this light for years now, both as a casual EDC item as well as on duty as an EMT. And I realized this was my favorite light for casual EDC because of how compact it is. In terms of the shape, it's pretty much the same shape as any modern day car key fob, which is nice. Uh, the interface is really nice and simple. It's rechargeable and I can even throw it onto my keychain if I want to. And next up are my EDC medical items. Of course, these items are just for my casual everyday carry. These are not items items that I carry with me on duty as an EMT. Of course, I have my medical bag, but for just a casual EDC, the Snake Staff Systems ETQ and the Live the Creed Pocket IFAC are both great quality compact EDC medical items. First up, we have the Snake Staff Systems ETQ. ETQ stands for Everyday Carry Tourniquet. This is essentially just a smaller version of the CAT tourniquet. The CAT tourniquet is pr pretty much the universal standard for a good tourniquet. It's the same tourniquet I utilize as an EMT. Pretty much every EMS agency and fire department will carry a cat tourniquet or a similar windlass style. And as I said, the ETQ is basically just a small compact version of it. Got the windlass right here and has some added additions that are pretty nice. But of course, the best thing about this is that this is pocketable. I can easily throw this into my back pocket and forget about it. But should someone have a major arterial hemorrhage, I literally have a tourniquet in my back pocket and it's ready to use. And then the next medical item I have is the Live the Creed Pocket IFAC. Live the Creed sells pre-made kits, but I decided to just buy the pouch, which is made in the USA, and add my own items to fit my needs. It's slightly bigger than a typical men's wallet and it has this nice uh, velcro closure and you get two elastic pockets. First up, by far the most utilized medical item in my EDC is the uh, Boo Boo Kit or Mini First Aid Kit. It's in this clear plastic Ziploc bag. I got various band-aids in various sizes as well as some alcohol prep pads. Again, it's always good to be prepared for the major bleeds and emergencies, but you're not going to be walking into those every day. But you'll definitely encounter plenty of times where you'd need a first aid kit and it's nice to have a small micro first aid kit full of band-aids and prep pads and this pack fits really nicely in one of the elastic pockets and is very compact and folds flat and then in the other pocket of the EDC IFAC is a package of quick clock combat gauze. Quick clock gauze was made to be essentially the best packing gauze. It has clotting agents inside it but what I like about it is that there's a lot of gauze and since I'm not carrying an entire trauma IFAC IFAC on me. I think any type of Z folded gauze, whether it has clotting agents in it or not, is probably one of the most versatile medical trauma items you can carry. In addition to wound packing, it can also be utilized as a pressure dressing, maybe even wrapping head wounds, and it all fits in a very small and compact form factor, and it can easily fit into the pocket IFAC with ease into one of these slots. I like carrying both the pocket IFAC and the ETQ in my back pocket, or if I'm wearing a jacket, I can easily just throw both of these into the jacket and forget about them. But if someone were to suffer a traumatic injury, these are ready to go and ready to be used. And last but not least in my EDC is my Urban Survival Kit. I made an updated video on what's inside the Urban Survival Pouch, so I won't go too in-depth about this. But essentially, this pouch consists of a lot of Michelin 
miscellaneous items that could be useful. I'm not necessarily utilizing them on a daily basis, but they can definitely be useful and I have used a good amount of them in the past for random tasks. They all fit nicely in this Zero Feud pouch. It's American made. I think they call it the wallet pouch, but regardless, it's quality. I've carried this for a few years now. Got a YKK zipper. Got a nice uh, little panel for patches. Uh, these are some newer patches I got. I got a Flytanium patch, a Glow Rhino patch, as well as the Lander Remote patch from that limited edition Lander. And then a new addition that I added uh, after the updated video is this Exotech zipper pull. In addition to making the zipper more accessible and longer, the core of the pull is made out of flammable tinder, which is nice in a pinch, and it doesn't really add much bulk to the Urban Survival pouch. This pouch easily fits inside one of my front pockets, or if I'm wearing a jacket, I can easily throw it into one of my jacket pockets. And that is my updated EDC at the end of 2023. What do you guys think of the new additions to my EDC? I'd definitely like to know down in the comments. So that's going to do it for this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Follow me on my socials. If you really love the video, please consider leaving a super thanks in the tip jar below. And thanks for watching.